Hi, you're watching the buzz with Joe. Hi, you're watching the buzz with Joe D of the Sacramento Bee. That's me. Glad to have you aboard. We're going to do this every week. Profiles, human interest stuff, rankings, fun, flavor, insight that you won't get anywhere else. Ah, welcome, welcome. Well, that uh, that was a football uh, intro from a, a recent game um, with Capital Christian and Grant. Uh, Joe Davidson here. Glad, good to have you. Uh, reminder, join us every week here for this. This show gets taped uh, and archived. We have stuff every day in the Sacramento Bee's print edition, the E edition, uh, online, sacbee.com, every day on social media with, uh, with me or Cameron Salerno or Jim Patrick, uh, we're covering high school sports more thoroughly now than we have in many, many years because the consumers, you, um, are expecting it. You want it. It's 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 uh, it's a great coverage, and plus you're paying for it with a subscription. So we thank you very much. Uh, a lot of stuff going on every week. Here we are in the heart of spring, and there's always something going on. Uh, we're going to touch on Grant football coach Mike Albergini. He is out after 282 wins, a section record. He wants to return. We'll dig into that. Why he's not allowed, and what's up with these year-to-year at-will contracts? Meaning. This could happen to anybody, and has had has happened to anybody. Another big time football coach is out as well. As well. The same seems to happen every week. We got two more to actually talk about this week. Um, Ian Book of Oakridge High School in Notre Dame, uh, quarterback drafted in the fourth round. We'll talk a little bit about him. A good guy who's played good football for a long time. Ty Uber and Malcolm Moore are players to watch. They played against each other. Two major league baseball prospects. But Cameron Salerno will join me here momentarily. We'll talk about those guys. Uh, they're also uh, headed to Stanford if they don't get drafted. So it tells you what kind of student athletes they are. Baseball top 10, softball top 10, basketball top 10 for boys and girls. We'll dig into all of that. So um, stick around. We're glad to have you here. And you know, first thing I want to talk about is, is Mike Albergini. Um, you know, what a, what a legacy, what a career wrote about him on Sunday. Um, there's Mike. Uh, he's the classic throwback coach, who, a yeller and a screamer, kind of a Mike Ditka sort. Um, but he loved up his guys just as much as anybody. He, His first season as Grant football coach was 1991, led the region in victories in the 1990s and also in the um, 2000s. And then the area closed the gap. And Mike's last great team was 2014. Uh, and then he had them going again this spring. They went 2-0. You can see Mike here. He can really hold court. Uh, anybody barks at you like that, I think you're going to freeze. I always used to tease with him, um, tease Mike, that uh, he had a scowl that could peel paint. Um, the kids loved him. We love you, Coach Al. He wasn't Mr. Albergini. He wasn't coach. He was Coach Al. The, the, the field was named after him. He wanted to be back uh, one more season after going 2-0 and this shortened spring. The administration said, we'd like to have you stick around as maybe a, as a coaching mentor. He feels like he's already done that over 30 seasons. I tend to agree with the old coach. Uh, it's too bad he didn't get to do it his way and bow out on his terms. Um, but his legacy is there. This is a uh, this is a program that um, is deeply rooted in Del Paso Heights. There to Mike's right in this photo here is Carl Reed, the longtime assistant coach, athletic director. He, he is the rightful choice um, to take over. I think the world of Carl Reed, I think, is an excellent coach. Um, Played for Coach Albergini. His father, Lynn Reed, is a, is a staple there at Grant as well. And then when you think about Mike Albergini, you think of this, this the section championship Gatorade bath. This is a perfect photo here by the B. Uh, he won seven of those section championships and also won in 2008 the first CIF State Open Division Championship. Uh, a great milestone for this entire sack walking section. The first team to win a state championship, put, put this area really on the football map. And uh, you know, Mike Mike looked good even in pink. That's probably a breast cancer awareness, or maybe he lost a bet. I'm not sure. He used to just land based and blister referees, but in his last few years, they would listen to him. There's a lot of respect, and there he is at Mike Albergini Field. There's they're planning at Grant a um, a real toast the old coach um, later this month at the field, uh, bringing alumni from from different years just to really to say thank you. And though Mike is disappointed he's not coming back. Uh, Coach Al is very proud of what he's done um, and who he is. And here's a sweet moment here where he's hugging Nicole Clavo, whose son, J.J. Clavo, in 2016 was was gunned down by a nobody with a gun, is the way I describe it, and um, on a food run before a playoff game. And so coaches like Mike Albergini hold communities together and kept everybody together. Uh, and here he is uh, with Craig Murray, the, the former principal, and he's waving at a parade. Um, 
maybe he's just showing up to school one day. I don't know. Maybe people wave to him all the time. But no, they, there was a big parade in Sacramento for Coach Al and the Grand Pacers. Everybody was ro- rooting for them, them uh, rooting for them in 2008 to win that state championship. And uh, and here he is. Um, look at this great photo of him in his final game just a couple of weeks ago. Beat Capital Christian with a late touchdown drive. They went 2-0. and Won his 282nd. Um, career game, the most in Sac Joaquin section, the second largest section in the state. And his players all said, we love you, coach. We love you, Al. We love you, coach Al. So end of an era. Um, football's not the same without Mike, but uh, he'll be around. He's 75. He he also wonders if uh, maybe it's time to get off the old treadmill. It's, um, um, you know, it, it's understandable. And, you know, and coaches don't always get renewed. It happened with Guy Anderson, the longtime Baseball coach um, at Cordova High School in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and into the 2000s, and and Guy Anderson was um, was let go. Um, he called me right after he was released and said, "You're talking to the former Cordova baseball coach, and these are at will contracts, year to year contracts, so you can be cut loose any day, and it happens. It's 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 cutthroat. It's hard, but Guy Anderson uh, is is going along strong at 87 years old, still." Um, Biking, still living life, and talked to him about Coach Alberghini. He said, let's hope that Coach Alberghini calls him Michael, smells of roses, and enjoys retirement. I think that's a great tribute. Uh, so it's good to talk to those guys. And farewell to Coach Alberghini. And we'll get him on here if we can figure out uh, uh, the internet sometime. So uh, there we go there with, um, with, with, with the coach. And real quick, let's talk about Ian Book, Oak Ridge High School quarterback, went to Notre Dame. There he is, the, the winningest, winningest quarterback in the history of – the Fighting Irish and a fourth round draft pick by the uh, New Orleans Saints. Is he too small? He's only six foot. Well, they used to say that against uh, about Drew Brees. Drew Brees. I talked to him last week for a story in the B, and he said, "Hey, it's 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 your heart. It's the immeasurables, and that's that's what he has." And here's here's something um, that he, he and Book had to say about uh, his what's going on with him in his life now. I think it's huge that Drew Brees was was there was there for as long as he was doing what he was doing. You know. We're different players, but we're similar in stature. And he proved to everybody down there and in the world that he could do it. And I want to do the same thing. Now, so kudos to Ian Book. One of the things I mentioned in the story about Ian Book last week is um, when he talks to these football executives, they don't have to talk about a, a, a criminal past. He's clean, spotless. And he said, hey, that pays off. So more football talk. So kudos to him for for doing things the right way. And uh, his best friends growing up in Eldorado Hills are still his best friends now. So fame has not changed him. So kudos to him. So uh, speaking of guys with good hair, let's bring in um, our good friend, uh, Cameron Salerno. Oh, look at that. He put his lid on, you know, because he was showing off really. Is that a, it's, it's a, I thought it was a Notre Dame hat, but it actually that's for no. your girlfriend, right? Yes. From uh, Idaho water 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 water. Water. So I, I got a fun story about Ian book for you. So well, first I you have to tell me about the hat. Well, I, I'm wearing a hat because uh, I'm repping Idaho Volleyball uh, for my girlfriend. Uh, and her name well, is? Nikki. She's great. We're all about the details here. Okay. Anyway, so oh, get, yeah. what's, your, what's your story on Ian Book? So my story about Ian Book is I say the first unofficial high school football game I ever covered was Wood Creek versus Oak Ridge. And this was in 2015. This is Book's senior year. And honestly, I hadn't heard much about Ian. Like, I just knew he was – Oak Ridge had this really good quarterback. So I went to go watch and – I remember I was texting uh, stat updates to uh, Stephen Wilson, who's the former sports editor at the Roseville Press Tribune. And that's it was funny because I think that day was the day I pretty much got my internship and really started journalism. But uh, I saw book play. Um, it was a really close game. Uh, it went to overtime, actually. I remember on the first play of overtime, Wood Creek thought they were going to beat Oak Ridge. And book just runs it in for a touchdown or throws it in. or I, I forget what happened. My, my brain is lagging. But, um, yeah, Book was just incredible. I mean, you can tell he was going to be a winner, and he had a great career at Notre Dame, and I think he's going to have a good career in the NFL, too. You know, I agree. I saw him the first time when he was a sophomore. They played at Grant, Oak Ridge at Grant, and Grant was loaded then, and Grant sent the house uh, yeah. after him and blitzed him on the weak side, and he got away every time, and he won the game. And I said, this guy's good. He's really yeah. good, and he's he's proven it. It's hard to get drafted. So, hey, let's talk uh, – what do we talk about every week? We talk about, hey, more coaches coming and going. We have a, another one, maybe not a big surprise, but Andrew Betancourt of Kasum Oaks. Oaks. Um, there he is. He coaches with passion and fury. He's he, he does it his way, which doesn't always please everybody. His players love him. They uh, Anthony Grigsby, his quarterback, said he's the most hated coach around. That may be true. He doesn't have a lot of friends in, in the De- Delta League. They, you know, there was legalities and, and public information. Um, 
requests and lawyers and all that. So he, I talked to him last week. He said that he's bowing out as football coach to really spend more time with family and pursue other uh, interests. Uh, some people think that maybe he was going to get fired, uh, these year to year at will contracts, but he did some pretty good work in a pretty short period of time. And, um, so he's out. Um, and the one that really surprises you, I think is the one we just talked about this morning is John Wiley is out yeah. after just two seasons at Christian brothers and talked to him at length last night. Uh, and he's got a, a superstar son, Jet Wiley, Cameron, I think you've seen him. Um, he's fast. He's a great student. Not the old coach. I mean, he's, he's not fast anymore. Um, he does it. He does. He wants to spend more time with his family, with Jet, who's only a, a sophomore. Jet, by the way, is not a lineman name. That has to be a, a skill player guy. And then he's got a, a 12 year old daughter who's a, a golfing star. Uh, her name's Jai, um, Jay, J A I. Um, so there's, does that surprise you? Joe, I think I think you can speak on this too. I think that's probably the most surprising step down of this kind of coaching summer spring cycle, wherever you want to call it. Uh, I know John Wiley came to Christian Brothers last year, had probably the biggest win of his career at Christian Brothers is being Jesmond the Holy Bowl. That was that was incredible. People would dump Gatorade on him, and it, it they, was they a, flooded the field. Yes, uh, it was it was an amazing scene. I remember uh, I said I'm going to go cover that game. I think it's going to be a good game, and it, it turned out to be uh, definitely worth my time. But yeah, yeah I, I, I remember I, that that game. That was uh, you and I were texting. I was covering Sac State that night, and um, you know, I said, "Hey, you just be prepared. Whoever wins, they'll 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 storm the field." And uh, so you you survived it. I mean, you're here, yeah, but uh, you saw you saw a neat moment. Oh yeah, it's a big deal. These people. I mean, Jesuit Christian Brothers has been one of the best rivalries in Sacramento for years and years and years. And I know uh, the fiftieth Holy years. Bowl, fiftieth Holy Bowl will be this fall. The official yes. 50th. Yeah, and you know John uh, wore a cap and a shirt and tie um, this 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 season to kind of honor his college coaches, and uh, uh, I think he'll be back. He'll be a while, but you know what we're seeing, Cameron, is coaches. A lot of them, Eric Cavalier and Jeff Evans, and you know a lot of coaches, Mike Strubing, are taking year off, or they don't want to be head coaches anymore. It's a grind, and it will wear you into the ground. This whole COVID chaos this spring with testing, and you know they suddenly they're chemists and scientists trying to supervise testing, and then you know, this game is off and that game is off. So there's all this scramble. Um, they knew it was going to be a cluster. Um, just glad to have a season in, but it takes its toll. And uh, this is about the most coaches I've seen bow out after a season uh, in a long time. Uh, L Logan Savoy of Bear River, it's no surprise. They've done it for 30 plus years. Um, so it happens. And, um, you know, and and look at how, how close the next season is where it's about 100 days away so all right cameron let's shift real quick to baseball it is baseball season i saw a terrific yeah. game last week with two big time prospects two potential b players of the year all metro guys uh ty uber of ponderosa um th this guy look at him he just looks the part this is uh, a, a great photo bar or, or a photo journalist um guru paul kitagaki at the b and he was not as sharpest at, at mcclatchy a week ago today you could still see that he's got all this upside he's six foot five as a power throw he hits the 90s um, he's headed to Stanford unless the major league uh, draft entices him, but uh, certainly a, a great student, a good player, but he's human. He, he, uh, McClatchy beat them, uh, which happens. He, he, he had some walks and all that, but after the game, he says, you know, what? I'll be okay. Um, but you, you've heard about him. Um, yeah. you've seen him, yeah. uh, the guy's a real deal and he could he be our next major deal. league guy. He's, he just, you look at some of these players and like when you cover a game, you can just, you can if you don't know anybody, you can just look at someone. And be okay, yeah. He he's their dude, tallest guy, six five. He's I don't know how much he weighs, but he's he's a unit. He's just he hits the ball hard. Uh, great pitcher, and I know there's also another uh, MLB prospect uh, for next year's draft at that game, and Malcolm Moore, who oh, I think is probably yeah. our top pro, uh, rated prospect. You'll never guess what position he plays as he sits That's there. Right. Um, no, he's um he's uh, this is more Paul Kedagaki photos for the B and. Uh, he's the one who ended this mercy shortened game. Um, and so it's, if, yes, with a, th uh, a three run home run and there are no fences at McClatchy high school. So it means that that guy was on his horse chugging around and he's a, there were some major league scouts there and they're, they don't care about wins or losses or stats. What these major league scouts are looking for is, is uh, body mannerisms. Are they coachable? Do they lose their poise? Did was Ty Uber still composed after giving up walks, he sure was. So they already know what they're going to do with him. They're just still kind of taking a peek. Earlier this season, there was up to 20, 25 scouts watching a, a Ty Uber game. Now it's down to about 
three or four doesn't mean he's dropped his stock. It just means they already know what they're seeing. They're going to go out and look around. So this is just a sample, Cameron, of what kind of baseball players we have. We have good teams. We also have exceptional players. Yeah, and I agree with that. I, I want to ask you, Joe, who – for you, who's been the best catchers you've covered in this area? There's, I think the catcher position, pitcher position has been two prominent positions to come out of this area. Obviously, you have Daniel Suzak last year, who's having a really good season at University of Arizona. You have Anson Arrows at Placer, senior this year, who is I saw him a couple weeks ago. Guys. So I'm just no, curious. There's been, yeah, there's been so many to answer your question, Cameron. Um, there was the older Susak who played for Jesuit some ten years ago, and he's in the major leagues. Uh, and so how's that family uh, lineage? And um, there have been a few. There was uh, Mike Tonis back in the late '90s at uh, at Oak Grove. I, I should old guy from like 1975, just so you could say I wasn't around. Um, but no, there's there's been a lot. And so, hey, on the topic of baseball, let's talk baseball top ten. Cameron Salerno does our baseball rankings every week at Sacramento B or SacB.com. Um, he goes with a top 25 with a bubble rank list of more. So we're going to just do a little teaser here. So, Cameron, I'm going to throw it back to you. Uh, Granite Bay still number one. Uh, lost on a walk-off at Placer, but I like your thinking, you know, still overall the best team, Elk Grove. Well, why isn't Elk Grove number one? Well, just had lost a, a close game to De La Salle, which is a powerhouse. You've seen them, but um, um, I see what you have is number two, three, two, three, and four are Delta League teams, so the Delta League is, is certainly strong. Yeah, the Delta yeah. League is loaded. With number think, nine, Davis, and number 10, Jesuit as well. Yeah, I know. The Delta League is, I think, has been the strongest league, baseball league in the area this year. But I think the team that's been the biggest riser for me the last few weeks has been Placer. They obviously beat Granite Bay on a walk-off hit by John Handy, who's a top freshman in this area. And they are just – they're getting a lot of big wins. They're playing a lot of tough teams. I know they played Elk Grove uh, last week as well, and they lost 6-5 in a valiant effort. Um, they're a riser. I, they've come a long way because I covered them in the first game of the season when they played Granite Bay, and they lost 11-1 to in uh, five innings. And so they've yeah. come a long way since that game. And I think that culmination of beating Granite Bay after losing them by 10 runs is pretty cool. So they're don't a big drop, Don't drop culmination on this show. We're, we're <laughs> loose and free here. Jesuit Elk Grove play three times this week. I love how the Delta League does that. Uh, and Davis has been a power. Look at Placer, rightfully ranked. Uh, Placer you know, with James Field up in, uh, up in Auburn with home lights um, for Friday and Saturday games. I've seen that. It's, it's oh, Pete DeFore is the highlight there. He's on the – uh, public address. He's playing uh, music. He took requests from Heather and me. It, it was it was great. So all right, let's let's segue into softball. Softball uh, has been terrific around here for years. Uh, Pete DeFore, our good friend, does our baseball rankings top twenty every Tuesday on SACB.com. So here's just a teaser there. So look who we have. We have the some usual customers here. Rockland's been powerhouse uh, all season. Um, our Jim um, Patrick has seen them a couple of times. Sheldon, how can you have a team ranked six and eight at six and eight? Well, a lot of those are. are a residential forfeit. eligibility forfeit thing, um, you know, still loaded. So look at the Sierra Foothill League teams or the Placer County teams, Rockland one, Bellero three, Roseville five, uh, Sheldon and Elk Grove or Delta League rivals will play again. Vannon unbeaten. Vannon has a win over Sheldon. St. Francis has these terrific twins. Um, Grace and Hope Jenkins going to UConn. They're only juniors. I think we'll catch up to them this week for this show. So uh, some pretty good stuff there. And then we're, we're big on milestones. You talked about in baseball rankings this week that the Del Campbell coach just won his 100. His name is Kevin. I can't Wilson. pronounce his last name. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Good yeah. job. I, I, I just call him coach. He, he, uh, coach he, he, team. Yes. And, and, you know, so a good guy. And so um, Amanda Buck of Elk Grove softball won her hundredth game. And here's a photo from with her and uh, her ace um, pitcher, uh, Issa Silva. She's only a junior, but uh, this is how vested Amanda Buck is there. She's the all-time career scorer in basketball at Elk Grove from the late 90s, and she was an all-metro softball player. She said that I'm so into the school that a few years ago she went into labor on that field after the game with her son. And so, you know, I, I keep coaching till, till your water breaks. But um, so she won her 100th game, uh, terrific coach, spirited, um, fun. It's always neat to see. Uh, coaches who come back and 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 do their things. You know, we 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 admire these softball players. We, we couldn't foul off any of those windmill power pitchers. Yeah. We'd be lucky to. Yeah. We'd, we'd we'd be quivering. And, right and there. all and all and all the people on Twitter say, "Oh, I get hit off a girl easily." Like it, it just it's a stupid comment. I mean, the, those softball player, the softball talent in this area is exceptional. Um, and also, one more thing about the rankings. I think people need to understand that 
these are not standings. These are power rankings. We base teams. We we encourage teams to go play a tough schedule and play all those top ten teams. And all are. of these all these teams we're seeing here in the softball top ten, they've all played each other. Um, yeah, oh, they're very and, 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 and just so whether they're in league. Uh, Sheldon's played Rockland. Uh, you know, uh, Elk Grove's played Deloro, and uh, and same with your baseball. And you're right with football. It's these aren't one loss standings. These are uh, power ranking. Okay, and with that same theme. Let's bring on our basketball, boys basketball top 10. We're going to release first thing in the morning our basketball top 20 for girls and boys. Cameron and I comboed on that. We also talked to area coaches on what's going on, who's playing, how much social distancing, with, you know, how much chaos is going on. So Jesuits, number one team, Asa Silva, you know him, Cameron. Um, a couple other good players there, Capital Christian is certainly formidable. These are with last year's record. So um, real quick, Cameron, we've got uh, – Jesuits of the Delta League, so is Elk Grove, so is Sheldon. Um, Grant is number 10. Grant hasn't been cleared to play. Neither wow. has Burbank, which is our number 11 team. Um, the Elk Grove Unified School District teams, Elk Grove and, and, and Sheldon, just got started last week. Uh, Capital Christian's got a few games in. You've seen Jesuit already 9-0. and What do you like about the Marauders? I, I really like Chris Hawley. I think he's, he's going to Sacramento State, really good guard. And then they got uh, Andre Stoyakovich, who is uh, has a very Sounds very familiar. Good story. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was funny. Uh, someone tweeted that uh, he was having a big game. I think he had twenty and seven against Whitney. And they said, "Yes, that's Stoyakovich." And yes, I, I think and Peja, Peja watches him. The former Kings great watches him. He was there. Uh, looks like a nervous dad. You know, uh, kind of you know stiff and upstand. We'll, we'll catch up to him. And this kid's only a sophomore, I believe. Uh, yeah, and he has an. Awesome he's got talent. skills. He's yeah, like a he has, page out there. Yeah, and I think that's uh, you know he does more layups than Paige ever did, so that's that's <laughs> not bad either. So so Chris Hawley and then Issa Silva and then Tim Kelly is the coach. He's an alum, um, you know, there as well. And then Capital Christian's got a lot of kids back as well. Why don't we start a a, a push today, Cam? Right here. Why don't we get Capital Christian and Jesuit to play? Let's do it on a Saturday. Do it on a Sunday. You know, let's go. Let's get those two teams to play. They have never played each other in basketball wow. uh, or football for that matter. And there's different reasons, you know. Um, I don't agree with him. I, I, I wonder if Capital Christian uh, doesn't want to lose to Jesuit or Jesuit doesn't want to lose to Capital Christian. I'm not sure, but this would have been a perfect spring to rev it. I mean, we could still get it in. We could do yeah. all kinds of things. I mean, Jesuit has we'll, played we'll a lot of they played, uh, they played Granite Bay last night. Or, well, yeah, last night. And then they played Rockland on Saturday, who was previously undefeated. So Jesuit is playing a really tough schedule. It really is. And playing yeah. Sheldon this week, Sheldon graduated nine Senior Sheldon last night lost at Modesto Christian, a, a longtime powerhouse, and our good friend Julian Lopez of the Modesto Bee covered that story. So, all right, real quick, girls basketball top 10. The full list is on sacbee.com. Uh, Cameron, you're doing the girls ranking. I'm doing the boys ranking. So right away, I see number one antelope, and that means uh, a heck of a coach in Sean Chambers and a terrific player uh, in Janaya Harrow. What, what she's she's back for more. Yeah, Janaya is yeah. incredible. I think, to the gap between – uh, ranked teams. Antelope is cl the clear number one team in our area. They have firepower. They're the they've won section championships with Janaya. Um, they have a good supporting cast around her too. Um, I saw Oak Ridge uh, last week, and Tegan Brown I think is the second best player in this area. She just got recently offered by University of Washington. Uh, scored twenty seven points and a win over Whitney. So she's really good. I think this area is uh. Like I said to you last week, this area is on the rise with girls basketball talent. There's, I don't know what they're on the rise. Let me, let me, let me coach you up, young sir. The girls basketball around here has been great for years and years and years and years. In a lot of ways, it's been better than boys. More scholarship yeah. kids, more teams that have gone to the state finals. Uh, but, uh, uh, but no, you, you, I, I, you know, you're right. It's still got great staying power. Um, and then McClatchy's in that listing there. And the, you know, I was talking to Jeff Oda, the the girls coach ranked number nine and they're doing outdoor workouts. Yeah. The Sac city unified school district has not even cleared their teams to play or practice indoors. There's fears and concerns that there may not be a season. That's unfortunate. Well, same, with, same with grant for girls and boys basketball. So it's a little imbalanced. It's unfortunate. Um, and Burbank coach, Lindsay Farrell, the, the boys coach, uh, we were talking and he says, Hey, we're frustrated. We, we have a thousand seats in our gym for vaccinations. But we can't get our 13 boys basketball players in here to do a workout. It's 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 these kids need it. They have every right to be upset. So we'll see in the coming weeks. We'll keep tracking that. We'll be going to more and more games. Um, Cameron's always good to have you here. And uh, we appreciate everybody for tuning in. Um, 
Check us out every day on SACB.com or the e-edition or the print version. Cameron Sonner is on Twitter. I'm on Twitter. Uh, our good, our great boss, Jim Patrick, is on Twitter as well. So uh, we thank you for joining in. Special thanks to Camario Roberts. Without her, we're, we're just talking to ourselves, which we're doing yeah. anyways. And then also to David Caraccio, who's uh, who's the one who does a lot of the producing and, and just makes us look sane yeah. and alive. So yeah, we appreciate no, we, it. We, we, we appreciate we, you, brother. Yeah. And we'll uh, we'll talk real soon. Next week, wear, um, wear a Weber State hat. I'm challenging you. Yeah, I know. Next week we'll have a big reveal as well, as far as our uh, our top uh, boy or girls softball and boys baseball uh, players of the year candidates. At this point, and I guess our big reveal today was John Wiley. Nobody knew about that. Uh, he didn't even know how I knew. I said, "I'm in the business of knowing." That's a fair argument. <laughs> I think so, it might have him. Yeah, I, I didn't know that, and I said, "Well, I talked to your boss." So, and uh, also a big reveal today of sorts was our girls and boys basketball top tens. We haven't released that. So uh, we're signing off, Cameron, my friend. Always keep up the good work. And thank you to all the the, the, the readers, the viewers, the subscribers. We, uh, we are indebted to you. We appreciate you very much. And we'll see you all next week.